Washington to provide an update on what has been happening is Western New York Democratic Congressman Brian Higgins. Congressman, thank you very much for your time. Good to be with you, Liz. So uh, what's happening? <laughs> what is going on down there? It's very confusing. <laughs> Nothing. We were anticipating a vote about 6 o'clock, and it's been delayed. I anticipate that the Speaker doesn't have the votes that he needs in order to pass his bill. Yeah, you know what's really interesting about this is that even if he does get the votes to pass his bill, the Senate Majority Leader says it's dead on arrival, the White House hates it, and you guys don't like it either. So what's the point? Well, it's a cynical political ploy. Uh, they're going to take this vote. It's uh, symbolic at best. And uh, I mean, look at his plan. First of all, it's it's nine hundred billion dollars in cuts over ten years, and then he'll raise the debt ceiling uh, by an equal amount, and then we'll come back and do this uh, charade again uh, in several months. Mm. Uh, the fact of the matter is, we should have a grand plan that includes uh, four trillion dollars, uh, three trillion in spending cuts, and a trillion by closing tax loopholes uh, on the very wealthy. That's a good plan that would send the right signal uh, to the market in, in an economy that desperately needs uh, good news. Well, and you would actually have to come back and do the vote at a time when everybody was looking to the 2012 elections. Wouldn't it be worse even, if you can imagine such a thing, than what we're looking at right now? Yeah, it would be ridiculous. It's already ridiculous. I mean, it's no wonder people hate Congress. Uh, this is not what uh, people send uh, members of Congress to Washington for. Uh, the fact of the matter is we have uniquely American problems that require uniquely American solutions. It's the responsibility of both parties to come together. Uh, that's why <clears throat> several weeks ago when uh, uh, Speaker Boehner and President Obama were uh, discussing the possibility of a grand plan, you know, that made a lot of sense, mm -hmm. uh, a $4 trillion uh, deficit reduction reduction plan. You need uh, a balanced approach to reducing over the long term uh, this $14.3 trillion deficit. Okay. Debt. Debt. But if, if ultimately the grand plan, which I know is what the president re prefers and what the Democrats have said they prefer, doesn't materialize because it's clearly not what the Republicans prefer, are you prepared to vote yes on something short term? I'm prepared to look at the Reed plan, which uh, would raise a debt ceiling beyond the 2012 uh, uh, calendar year. Okay. Uh, I think that's more reasonable, but I'm very disappointed that we don't have a bigger plan because the underlying problem here is the economy. You get healthy budgets by having a healthy economy, and without making the investments in infrastructure and cancer research uh, in education, you're not going to grow this economy where, it's, where it can be sustained over a longer period of time. You know, we learned from, from the Clinton administration, those eight years uh, were very prosperous. Uh, the Bush administration inherited a huge surplus, squandered it with tax cuts, and uh, financed two wars off budget, which is uh, primarily responsible for the debt situation, the deficit situation that we're in today. There are two theories that have come out that I'm interested in bouncing off you, okay? So here's the first one. Okay. What, why the Republicans are doing this at a time, as you and I discussed, that it looks like that their plan is DOA anyway. It's that they're giving themselves some right. leverage to survive in the event that there is in fact a default. Do you think that that's actually, that's so hyper cynical, but it seems like it could just give them cover. Is that possible? Uh, I'm not quite sure. You know, taking a vote on this plan and coming back a couple of months later I think is foolish and I think again it sends the wrong signal to the American economy. We should all be focused on trying to uh, uh, grow the American economy to a sustained level where we can produce employment and new investment in, in, in job growth and, and that's not happening. So I don't, I don't, I don't uh, presume to know what their motives are. Uh, I do know that uh, you know, if they talk a great game about debt and deficit reduction and you have a plan that's being discussed that is very, very considerable, uh, the $4 trillion grand plan or grand bargain or grand deal, call it what you will, uh, and they run away from it. Uh, this is cowardly, it's cynical, and uh, it's going to hurt the economy and it's going to hurt working families uh, in western New York and throughout the nation. There was, just, just before we go forward, cut, cut cap balance, which was the last thing that actually was being voted on in, in the House. Yeah. There were five Democrats who crossed the aisle and voted with the Republicans. Do you envision that there will be any way, shape or form, that any Democrats, I know that Boehner is having problems getting his conservative members, but what about the very conservative members of your conference? Are they in play? I don't. Yeah, I don't think there are any Democratic uh, votes uh, for his plan. And keep in mind, Liz, you know, in, in April of this year, April of this year, the Republicans in a party line vote approved a budget resolution that will increase, increase the national debt in 10 years by 8.8%. 
trillion dollars. Mm. Uh, so you know that action in and of itself uh, necessitates uh, the raising of the debt ceiling. Uh, so you know the Congress can uh, control spending if it wants to through the appropriations process, uh, which we do every single year. Uh, that's a vehicle through which uh, Congress can express its will relative to uh, debt and deficit reduction. Uh, that's what we ought to be doing. But we ought to be working in a bipartisan way uh, and in a balanced way that looks at both spending and revenues uh, to solve this problem. So remember, I told you there. That there were these two theories that have been uh, thrown out there. The first you and I discussed. The second now is this idea that maybe this delay is all tactical because in some way it, the closer you bring the country to the brink, the more pressure there is to get some kind of deal, particularly on the Senate where the majority leader says, no way, no how. You know, if you get everybody out there, you're playing a game of political chicken and maybe somebody's hoping, you know, the closer you get to the edge, the better it is for them. Yeah, I understand that, but but you know, keep in mind uh, the Senate Majority Leader uh, signaled uh, to the Speaker that there were no votes for his plan. Mm. Uh, the first thing that's going to happen when that plan gets over there, there'll be a vote to table it, and uh, the Reid plan, the Senate plan, will be taken up, which is a better plan. It's not an ideal plan, but it's a better plan. So uh, again, I, I, you know, there's a lot of games going on. I'm sure there's a lot of discussions going on uh, right now while uh, they're trying to twist arms to get votes to support this bad plan. Uh, I'm sure there's also some discussions going on, uh, back channel discussions with the White House, uh, trying to come up with uh, something that, that works to avert uh, the United States defaulting. Now, keep in mind, on August uh, 3rd, August 3rd, uh, the United States will have $306 billion in obligations and $172 billion to meet those obligations. For the first time in our history, we'll default, which will, uh, which will uh, wreak havoc uh, in the financial markets and uh, impose a default tax uh, uh, sponsored by the Republicans. Uh, on middle America, uh, higher interest rates for mortgages, higher interest rates for auto loans, higher interest rates for student loans. Uh, this would be a very bad thing. You know, the Republicans and some other critics have suggested that that kind of talk that you're that you're using right here, and that the president saying things like, you know, Social Security checks are going to be a problem, as Senator Schumer was also saying similar things. That that sort of thing scares people unnecessarily and heightens the sort of pressure and stress around this debate, which no. Nobody was really paying attention to well, until recently. I mean, what do you say to that? Well, you, you have a responsibility to define it for people and what it means to their lives and their real lives. And, and these are very real consequences uh, for actions or inaction. Uh, so it's incumbent upon those who are in positions of, 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 of power here in, in, in Washington to convey uh, to the American people what this all translates into. And th these are very, very real consequences. Higher interest rates, permanently higher interest rates, uh, would be a very, very bad thing for this economy. And, you know, keep in mind, you want to talk about you know uh, t uh, tactics and, and political strategy here. Look, you know what do presidents get judged on? They get judged on the strength of the weakness of the economy. And I think that the grand plan that was talked about before, the four trillion bipartisan balanced approach, uh, would have sent a very very positive signal uh, to this economy with clarity, with consistency, with stability, uh, which would benefit this president uh, uh, politically. Sure, sure. And I don't think that they're they're willing. I don't think they're willing to do that. And I think they're saying, you know, be damned with the American people. Uh, who cares what may or may not happen with the economy? Uh, we're not going to play this game. You know, uh, I think the president tried very hard over the last several weeks uh, to bring everybody to the table. And keep in mind, you know, the Republicans walked away uh, consistently. Okay. And I think they're running away now, and I think their actions are cowardly. Okay. Just two, two things before I let you go, and I know that it's a busy night down there. Uh, you know, the, the White House sure. spokesman, Jay Carney, already said he thinks, quote, the chances are not great for the grand plan. Do you believe the grand plan chances are dead at this point? Well, uh, you know, that's maybe his opinion, and I respect it, but I, I still think if, if people were looking at this objectively, <clears throat> if people were looking at this objectively, uh, there would be overwhelming support, Democratic and Republican, for a grand plan, because it's clear, uh, it's concise, and uh, what the economy is lacking right now is stability, and the economy does not respond well to uncertainty and instability. Uh, so, so it's incumbent upon uh, Congress to do a plan that provides uh, a, a path forward that is clear, that is concise, mm. and that's the, the, the disappointment. We'll, we'll probably get something less, I agree, uh, but it's very disappointing that we couldn't come up with a plan uh, that was a balanced approach and, 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 and really 
uh, would do what I think this economy needs, and it's a, a positive signal from Washington that it's getting its act together. And just quickly before I let you go, this idea of the 14th Amendment and the, and the president doing his own thing, if you will, Congressman Nadler said earlier today he thinks there's a high likelihood of a total impasse. That was this morning. And he believes there has to be a push right. for the 14th Amendment. Do you agree? Uh, I don't, because I think that will just confuse the issue that much more. Uh, people of goodwill should be able to come together and solve this problem on behalf of the American people. That's why everybody was sent here. And, uh, and uh, I think that there is uh, plenty uh, in these plans, uh, the components of these plans, that uh, allow individual groups to go back to their constituency and say, look, we didn't get everything, but we got a lot here. Mm. But more importantly, more importantly than anything else, uh, the economy needs a clear uh, concise uh, uh, a signal from Congress that we're serious about reducing this debt and deficit moving forward. Congressman Higgins, I'm so pleased that you were able to join us. I appreciate you making time. Thanks, and, for uh, thanks very much for being here. Thanks for having me.